um, when we started the gallery, um, we didn't have the option or we didn't have the privilege of, of having contacts in the industry that we could go to to write about us in the traditional media. Um, we didn't know any journalists or any directors of galleries or um, collectors or anybody. We didn't have any perspective. So when you're faced with that kind of situation, you have to go out and uh, build a community for yourself and, and tell your story. So we did that through a combination of kind of guerrilla marketing. We were painting stuff on the streets and sticking up stickers around town. Um, and obviously social media more powerfully because uh, as long as you have a consistent brand message, you can really uh, engage an audience around your kind of key belief or your key brand message. And we just ran with it and used social media as uh, a big tool to promote ourselves, build brand awareness and tell our story. And never realized it would become a sales tool, but today it's, um, it's got a huge commercial benefit for us as well. So we've sold works up to $250,000 through Instagram, um, indirectly of course, not directly through the platform. And most people, most clients that we have on Instagram feel comfortable around the £10,000 mark. So most of our sales come around that mark per piece. Um, but there are certain people out there who use Instagram quite voraciously and they, are, they have no problem spending £250,000, £300,000 on a piece of art um, as long as it's something that they love. And, I think there's an interesting kind of dichotomy between the, the investment potential of an art piece and art lovers. And I think Instagram really is the platform for art lovers. The, the kind of hedge fund managers who want to just invest in a piece and keep it in a storage facility, um, they tend not to really get any pleasure out of the, the aesthetic value of art or the, um, or the kind of, uh, you know, the collecting side of the process. It's more about a cold hard investment. And Instagram for them is not really the platform that they use. So there are other ways of targeting those people and marketing to those people. Um, and they tend to be kind of more networking functions and who you know. Um, but Instagram favors the true hardcore art collectors who love stuff, who love collecting for the love of art. Um, and obviously their, their budgets range from anything from a thousand pounds up to a million pounds. You grew with the growing of Instagram and all the social media. I think we, um, I think social media is now very hot in the press, um, in the art market press, as, as I think a lot more people are realizing its power. Um, it's obviously not just a tool for the art world, which I think is one of the reasons it's actually ironically successful within the art world. Um, it's something that documents culture at a broader level. You know, it documents travel, documents sport, entertainment, food. Um, and art as a part of that broader cultural experience. And the value in art is in that cultural experience, it's embedded in our culture. And if you remove it from that culture, it loses a lot of its value. Um, so Instagram's the perfect platform really for art to thrive. You talk a little bit about the figures. Our roster of artists have, have varying social media followings. Um, but one of our artists we actually found through Instagram um, and we then secured representation of him in London. Um, his name's Henrik Olderlin. Uh, he's a very, very talented Norwegian painter. Um, and before he started his Instagram page, he was uh, a self-proclaimed nobody. He was teaching art and he never considered um, art as a professional career. You know, today he is a really prolific, really hugely successful artist with a following of 161,000 people. So every day he'll post an image and there's 161,000 people responding to that, um, liking, commenting and sharing. Um, and he gets up to 10 inquiries every single week of people who've seen his paintings being posted to Instagram and wanting to buy or acquire one of these paintings. Um, so he has 161,000 people and when you think about it, that's like having the stage at Wembley every single night. So 150,000 people who are there listening to every single word that you want to say. And importantly, they've all actually followed his account. So they, they're not just receiving this as some random piece of advertising. This is something that they've... Uh, claimed interest in and are therefore hugely engaged in as well. If I'm a painter yeah. that come from the nobody statues to uh, Wembley yes. um, statues, why do I need a gallery for it? It's a very good question and um, you know a lot of artists are now realizing that they can market themselves incredibly effectively through social media platforms and Instagram especially. Um, and it does beg the question, do, do I need, you know, if you're an artist, do I need a gallery? Do I really need a gallery? And um, I think it boils down to the fact that the physical space is always going to um, be, you know, a pivotal part of the art experience. Art collectors 
aren't going to be totally satisfied with just buying a piece online. Um, art is, as I said, it's a cultural phenomenon and it doesn't translate very well onto just a screen. Um, so whilst Instagram is hugely powerful in the art market, it's not a substitution for the physical gallery. And I gave the reference inside of Ed Sheeran in the art, in the music world. Um, you know, he's set up, uh, he posted videos online of him playing the guitar back in the day when he was a nobody. And now he is the world's number one global recording artist. Um, but he's signed to a record label and he does shows in arenas. People aren't just listening through their headphones, they still turn up to the shows. Um, and there's still that physical human interaction which is fundamental to art. This kind of couple in between virtual and physical. Yes. That you need virtual, but you need physical, you need physical and virtual. Exactly. And, uh, you know, a lot of the, the big online platforms now that are, are selling art or are trying to sell art, they, they haven't done so very successfully. And the reason, I think, is because um, they're trying to replicate the gallery in the digital world. You know, they're trying to take the physical gallery and just stick it online. Um, but there's no real awareness there for the kind of the social element behind the art world and you know all the kind of experiences that you get from talking to the gallery director or learning about the piece within the gallery. Um, the beauty of social media is that it actually provides a layer over that physical world and allows you to kind of extrapolate that to hundreds of thousands of people. But it all starts with the physical. What are feeling about this, this, uh, this day? about these lectures and conference and networking? And I, think it's, I think it's really brilliant. I think um, it's lovely to have uh, so many art professionals come together under one roof um, to really talk. Um, you know, the kind of, I guess, sim similar events to this one would be art fairs. Um, when you go to an art fair, everyone's so busy, they don't have the time to really interact and talk on a personal level. It's all about, am I gonna sell? Am I gonna do this? Am I gonna do that? So it's nice to actually have a day where people can really soak up information, learn from other people's experiences, um, and hopefully take away some really useful insights that they can apply to their own businesses or um, in their own professional lives.